Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report live, and of course on Wednesday, first hour we have Harley Schlanger. Harley, um, this hour is probably one of the most important hours of the week because we cover a lot of issues and we deal just deal with with answers and responses to what's going on and a, a action plan. The latest issues, of course, that are they're cooking now. I guess we have we, we should call it the uh, "I'm not a crook" line version for uh, none other than the Obaminator. He is mm-hmm. uh, he's caught in his Watergate moment, as they say. Let's let's hit the the top stories. We see the further demolition of the European economy and the the Mad Hatter's Tea Party over there. Uh, we see no action whatsoever in Fukushima. The euro is dead, which means that they're going to resurrect a new currency, and I think it's all been by design. Uh, things are really starting to catch fire worldwide in terms of these interactive disasters, and we're ending up with a perfect storm, a cornucopia of disasters from hell this summer and fall. Well, I think we can start with what Lyndon LaRouche is calling Obama's Watergate moment. And uh, if you go to the LaRouche Pack website, we have a leaflet for mass distribution called Obama's Watergate Moment. And what... Uh, <laughs> What good good said, term. In, yeah. in Actually, what do you call that? I'm not a crook uh, kind of uh, moment. Well, you know, I, I was joking with people that we should probably do a caricature of Obama holding his arms out, doing the Nixon victory sign. You remember he did that with two arms? Yeah, two arms and up with, and, the two, and, and they do the victory sign with the V. And he'd shake and, his jowls, yeah. too. Shake and his jowls and look very put, serious. Yeah. Put Nixon jowls on Obama, but keep the Hitler mustache on him. And then, you know, he can say, I am not a crook. Uh, But what LaRouche said is, and this is a quote, if you go back to the Nixon impeachment process, you will smell similar features here. It's coming, and essentially just in time, hopefully. The mill is beginning to grind. I don't think this is easily turned back. Now, what you have is, is several different scandals coming up at once. The mildest, which is really one that the press seems to like the most, is Obama saying that the private sector is okay, uh, is doing fine, and then the Republicans coming back and attacking that, and the Obama defenders in the media saying, well, take the whole context. Here's the whole context. The guy has no clue how disastrous the economy is. He's wrecked it. You can't resurrect this economy without rejecting everything that he's done. So, you know, that's that's hitting, and Democrats are very much afraid, even without the security issues that I'll bring up in a moment, they're very much afraid they're going to lose the election on the economy. The Washington Post was talking about Obama giving advice to Merkel, the German chancellor under the headline, it's the economy, Dumkoff. And you can imagine what Merkel <laughs> said back to Obama on that. Now, the second thing, and I think this is where Obama's in big trouble, is the security question. The fast and furious, if you look into this, this in itself ought to be the grounds for impeachment. Obama had to know at some point what Holder and the Justice Department were doing, allegedly to track flows of weapons. But essentially, the U.S. government gave sold weapons to the Mexican drug cartel, Uh, And one of those weapons, at least one of them, was used in killing a U.S. border agent. Now, this investigation into this has gone on for a year and a half. If Obama were serious about finding out what happened, he could have done so. He could have said to Holder, give me all the documents, and if you're guilty, I'm firing you. Instead, Obama's saying there's no crime here uh, there's no, this is a partisan investigation and so on. And what they're finding, what they found yesterday, or what they announced yesterday, is that essentially the, I think it was the ATF, the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Chairman or Chief, uh, said that the, he sent out an email to Holder a year and a half ago saying that this whole situation smells bad and something has to be done. Uh, yeah, ATF Director Melson sent an email to Holder and possibly to Obama uh, on July 4th, 2011. So that's almost a year ago. And he said that there were wiretap uh, documents, and he said, I was surprised at the number of guns being purchased without our knowledge and not being interdicted. 
primarily because of the number of guns that could, as a result, land in Mexico. And he said that Holder better back off the statement in his February 4th letter to Grassley, because I don't believe that we can say, in light of the information that our agents were swearing to before a federal district judge to get a wiretap, that we didn't know about it. Yeah, in other words, they were fully aware that these guns were being sold. Uh, the whole idea was this. They wanted to set up a sting operation to say that Americans are selling massive amounts of guns across the Mexican border that are causing problems. And then they wanted to be able to then use this as a pretext to try to remove guns from American citizens. That's what they're trying to do. Well, I think the other part of it is that the Mexican drug cartel helped finance the Obama election campaign in 2008. Well, as that we might be true, from, but I, I think it's a minor a part. Uh, we're going to have Larry well, Pratt on. I'm certain that the, 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 the one of the big things that really the Obama administration wants to do is they want to completely rearrange the middle class and private property in America. If he gets another term, he wants to make sure there is no middle class, there is no private property, there's no liberty, and there's no guns. And uh, his his modus was to sell these guns. He could care less how many border guards or thousands of Mexicans died, and I'm sure it was in the thousands, not hundreds. And these guns, they were fully aware that these guns were going to end up in the hands of the cartel uh, and kill lots of people. I mean, if you go down to some parts of uh, northern Mexico, they put literally just like it's like watching the... Uh, well, you can't go. You can't go to parts of northern Mexico right yeah, now. Yeah, you go to the area and you'll see heads on pikes. I mean, it's, it's really unbelievable. They have them over the freeway ramps. You'll see people disemboweled and hanging from, from the, the overpasses in, in the freeways. It's crazy. But here's the, the point I'm making, which actually is as devastating a point, is that the Obama administration, through George Soros, is in bed with the drug cartels. Oh, well, George Soros manages Yugoslavia. See, his main source of money is not derivatives, believe it or not. His main source of finance worldwide for George Soros is managing the drug cartels that are primarily using some of these Eastern European countries like Yugoslavia as their main entry point into Europe. Well, and also Dubai and Abu Dhabi. But exactly. the important point, let's, let's just stay on this holder thing. The fact that you now have an affidavit from the head of the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Department or an email saying your agents had to swear in court that they were providing these guns in order to get the wiretaps. And now you're saying that nobody knew about this? Oh, my God. He said you'd better change your testimony. And that's what Senator Grassley released yesterday. And so this is going to be a big explosion. And I, I don't think they're going to be able to sweep it under the rug. The problem is that if Daryl Issa, who's a congressman from down in your area, if he insists on playing this out the way he's done so far, it's taken a year and a half, this is not going to remove Obama before the election. Well, what it's, we have to do is we have to have him removed before the end of June because we have to have time to get other candidates ready for the federal election. Uh, exactly. Because, so, and, and on the Republican side, we've got a disarray as well. I mean, we've got mittens. Well, but I call Flip Hat and I have Romney, and then we've got, uh, you know, you know, <laughs> I can say double cross Rand Paul. I mean, he, he, a lot of people are really mad. He got so many nasty emails after he made his statement. He's going to be more than welcome to be uh, Mitt Romney's vice president. We already know that the outcome of the election is very shaky indeed because Mitt Romney doesn't have support below the Mason Dixon line for real died in the wall Christians. And there's a lot of very upset black Christians that are very upset with Obama. And a lot of people that are so unemployed, I mean, the unemployment, there's now thought to be 100 million Americans that are of working age that could work, that can't find work. That's a lot of well, unemployed well, right, people. Right before the break, let me just finish this point on Holder, because we should move on from there. But the important thing here is that now McCain and others are coming in on the security leaks investigation. Oh, yeah, McCain's got to smell blood. Immediate this couldn't lead to immediate hearings and Obama's dismissal. Well, I think that when you see McCain smelling blood, the old bloodhound, you know that blood's in the water and the sharks are coming in for him. I think uh, Obama is just about toast. Welcome back to the Nutramental Report and Harley Schlanger, 
The websites are LaRouchePAC.com, that's L-A-R-O-U-C-H-E-P-A-C.com, LaRoucheP-U-B.com. Let's get to phone number 02, uh, Harley, for people who want to contact the LaRouche Foundation to know exactly what to say. That's 800-922-2907 to find out exactly action points. We're moving very quickly. We need to have a complete renewal of the Republican and Democratic parties from the inside out. We have a disaster that is going to strike in multiple levels from not only the disaster in Fukushima, the meltdown of Europe that's, uh, that's ongoing. It's just a matter of how quickly does it happen. Is it in two months or six months? We have the abominator who's now imploding because of his uh, I'm not a crook moment. And uh, we have climate shift that's causing crop failures all over the place. We're back in terms of three months behind in our, in our corn crop. And uh, worldwide, these policies combined with the oil prices, which are way too high, and the disaster that's brewing in the Middle East where we have an impending war there, this is not a good situation. This is like a cornucopia from hell. And well, uh, and, and having someone that's, a, that's an idiot like Obama, that's a narcissist in the White House that has no clue what to do next. Uh, and we have, on the other side, Mitt and Hananiah Romney, who really is the, would be, if he gets elected, the first Asperger's autistic president. We're going to have a lot of trouble. Well, let me let me come back to the top level because I think the the cure is within sight, and that is Obama. His the crimes of Obama are catching up with him. Uh, we started with the, the uh, Fast and Furious, and people probably can find plenty of material on that uh, on any website because that was public hearings yesterday. Uh, it's it's out in the press every day. We have stuff on our website on it. But the second thing, and this is the one where you might be able to get him much quicker, is the way he's using national security leaks to build up his political clout. Now, this is the the, the three issues involved here. One is the cyber warfare, which Obama is claiming credit for against Iran's nuclear program. Secondly, you're talking about the flame the, virus uh, thing that's been going on for five years. Yeah, yeah. And, in fact, the Israelis claim they did it, not Obama. But that's, that's a secondary point. I'll get to the important point on that in a yeah. moment. Right. Uh, second point is the drones. The New York Times article on the, uh, the kill, uh, what was it called? The kill policy or something like that. Yeah, the, the baseball <laughs> cards of death, let's call it that. that. The baseball yeah, cards the, of death. The anti-terror baseball cards. Yeah. And then the third one, which is probably the most significant, is the Al-Qaeda infiltration project that was blown by the way the administration handled the capture of the second underwear bomber. Now, this one, the Obama administration jumped out and said, we saved all the people on this plane because we had infiltrated the bomb-making cell, and that's how we got it, and uh, therefore, look how great we are, we save people. Now, in the process, that may have blown... Ten years of work to infiltrate a cell out of out of Yemen. Minimally, that the people involved in that are going to move to another place and mm-hmm. kill off anybody they don't totally trust. But it may affect dozens of undercover operatives working for the United States in Yemen. And so, by bragging about the great work that Obama is doing, you've jeopardized lives. Well, we had a, a comic. We had a comic a relief uh, here in North County News, and we have some excellent artists here. North County News here in, in North County, San Diego, and it showed an, a Obama in his teleprompter. Of course, he's a teleprompter president with a screen behind him of a guy that looks like he's Al Qaeda. And here is our Al Qaeda double agent. Uh, did we would we uh, expose intelligence information for political gain, Mister? Uh, Agent, and the guy he shows a picture behind him of this guy, and of course, obviously, yeah, he has a half life of about four minutes before he's dead. You know, if he's over in Yemen, well, one of that, these countries. That's exactly the point. Now, the other point is that how many people will die because we lost the infiltration of that cell? Now, right. then you have the the situation with the drones because these drones are killing more civilians than they're killing. Uh, terrorist targets. Oh, I know and it's ridiculous. They, they killed what well, last week. Obama had to kill of one guy, and then a few days later, when they had the funeral, they killed all the people at the funeral. Yeah, and this is the that's what terrorists do. That's not what the Americans do. Now we put together a very interesting report. I just want you to hear this because it actually 
shows. Well, actually, I'll get to that in a moment. I want to tell people why LaRue says that Martin Dempsey is one of the few heroes in this situation, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. But let me go to the third point now, the cyber virus. The, by using the drones and saying this is acceptable, and by using cyber virus and cyber warfare to attack other nations, doesn't that open us up for other countries to use cyber warfare, maybe to, th- to destroy our... our uh, uh, air guidance, traffic controller system. I mean, there's any number of things that you're essentially opening up by doing this that will cause more deaths. The fact exactly. that the President of the United States says it's legal and acceptable for me to kill people, including innocent civilians as collateral damage, makes us the target for al-Qaeda recruitment. Well, the three areas where we know the, the, the Chinese Blue Army, which is the Tianjin, China, has a special division of cybernetic uh, warriors. And it opens the door and says, hey, look, if America's doing this, see evil America, go for it, guys. They've already shown in the last three years that the Chinese Blue Army has infiltrated our power networks. They can shut down air traffic control, and they can shut down our traffic control lights. They can, shut down, they can actually blow equipment, which can be, take years to replace. Uh, and they can also shut down and cause station blackouts and nuclear reactors that can cause Fukushima. People don't understand yeah. this. They, they think, oh, this is just a minor thing, you know. No, it is not a minor thing. You start behaving badly like this, you encourage other people to behave badly as well. Now, here's the, the point on Dempsey, which I find very fascinating. Uh, after 9-11 and the Iraq War began, Dempsey was a brigadier general in command of the 1st Armored Division in Iraq. Now, Dempsey today is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and he's probably the single most important person that prevented Obama from already having us in World War III over Syria by, by insisting that the United States will not support the rebels in Syria. Uh, Dempsey openly came out and attacked the use of so-called enhanced interrogation techniques, in other words, torture. And this is what was being done by the Bush administration. Dempsey came out and said that we must remember who we are. Our example is what, is what will cause us to prevail in this environment, not our weapons. And he said we must be held to a higher moral standard than the people we're fighting. Well, with Obama, he's adopting the moral standard of the terrorists with the drone warfare. And so... You had initially the House chairman of the Intelligence Committee, who was a Republican, and the Senate chairman, Feinstein, insist there be an investigation into these security leaks. Now, immediately, Eric Holder appointed uh, two special investigators, but they don't have a special counsel. In other words, someone up and above the administration. And that's what McCain is calling for now. Yeah, well, he's calling for someone to have the ability to start actually grand jury indictments if they find information. Yeah. I'm, I'm certain that Obama had uh, an authorization of the sale and the volume of these guns and knew the Fast and Furious because their primary thing in the next election, one of the primary things is to take all our guns. Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report and Harley Schlager. Harley, let's get into the uh, Euro and much many other topics that need to be discussed today. Okay, uh, let me just finish with this uh, question of the security leaks. This does become the basis for a real impeachable offense. And yeah. Obama, again, said he knows nothing about it. And Holder is trying to keep from getting a special counsel uh, well, involved. I, the D-Day is the 20th of June because uh, uh, McCain and these others are calling now for a congressional um, basic action that basically is going to force him that he's even in contempt of Congress. He is, Holder is done. And, and when Holder squeals, as they say, when they flip a witness, if you know, know when they flip a witness for murder or something else, Holder will flip. He'll squeal like a stuck pig. And once he's leaked out enough more information or other people come out, Obama is going to be pasted as guilty as, uh, as they say, I'm not a crook and raise both hands up with a V sign. It's not going to work, well, Obama. Well, whether, whether Holder uh, squeals or not, the fact is that there are people in the administration who have already squealed. They're the ones, they were sent out by Obama to tell the media what a great heroic figure Obama is. 
And those are the ones who have already come out, and they cannot deny that they said these things now, that they, they violated uh, internal secrets. And one of the people who's being targeted now, two, the two people in the firing line on the security leaks, one is Tom Donilon who is the yeah. national security advisor, who has no experience whatsoever in national security. He was a political operative who got his start counting delegates for Jimmy Carter back in 1976. And he's the one identified by the pollster and columnist Pat Cadell as the likely source of the leaks to the media on how heroic Obama is. Now, the other person whose name comes up is David Axelrod, who has no security clearance, but is allowed to sit in on these kill list meetings of the president. And this is something that has many military people concerned. And here's why. What LaRouche says in this statement, Obama's Watergate moment, is that contrary to the view of Obama as some kind of soft, simpering liberal, this guy is a stone-cold killer. Oh yeah, he he's actually he's old Bush Bush George Bush Senior. Uh, any previous president, he has the heart of a of a killer, and, he, and with the fact that they can't even get him to do almost anything except uh, come out of the blue room, except when they give him the baseball cards and have one of these meetings to decide who's going to die next. Well, now here's the other reason that's significant: people who are going <sighs> to be called in as witnesses should be fearing for their lives. Some people in the Senate may already be fearing for their lives because we're talking about a hitler type maniac in the white house when well, LaRouche identified obama as nero he wasn't kidding around this is the character of this person well yeah, what i'd be concerned about is whether he has a, a hit squad like the centurions that they originally eventually had to have around the uh, the uh, caesar because they couldn't trust even the other members of the army and that's what's going on with with obama i mean uh, it's a very dangerous situation indeed. I mean, uh, when you have the National Defense Authorization Act and the Expropriation Act, when you have fearful uh, politicians, and uh, anybody is is in trouble, even people well, who are so-called Obama, allies, Obama's, even people who are Obama allies of Obama. Yeah, when Obama says there's no due process, there's only what he decides. That he's well, he, the judge, I, jury, and executioner. Well, you remember the uh, statement by George Bush that says he, he's a decider? Actually, I think yeah. he was prophesying that the decider was coming. Well, <laughs> the, the, so he's George the Baptist, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's George the Baptist. George you see, the, Baptist. See, the, 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 messianic, <laughs> the messianic antichrist has arrived. The false prophet is now grinning with that smile, as I say. He, uh, they, they call him the Nobel Peace Prize, and some little child came up in uh, January of 2008 and said, no, he has the Nobel Teeth Prize because he has a nice smile. You know, the uh, Bush was quipping when his uh, portrait was unveiled at the White House. When Obama's in trouble, he can walk down the halls and say, what would George do? I think Obama has already done everything that George had ever thought of doing and, and more. So I anyway, think George, even in his most stupid moments, couldn't do what Obama's done. It's taken no. great evil, great stealth, and surrounded by a cadre of minions from Satan's hell in order to do what Obama's done to the economy and done to the world and bring us to the brink. And he's even told the Israelis, don't worry, we can put off Armageddon until after the election. We're going to give you all the long-range bomber tankers. We'll give you all the GB-58 bombs. No problem. We've got the inventory ready for you. We'll just deliver it right after Obama Claus Christmas 2012. And we've gotten over all this stuff of the Mayan calendar, and we'll deliver. Then you can do Armageddon next year. When I'm now well, the... This is the, where... This is why we have to take this leaflet now and get its message out. It should go out on Twitter, on Facebook, however people can do it. Go to the LaRouchePack.com and get the leaflet, Obama's Watergate moment. And let's get this out, because if the McCain investigation is supported, if there's a full investigation, they're going to have to cart this guy out of the White House in a straitjacket, because he's guilty of crimes that are killing people now. But it's not just that. Remember now, the president in some ways has different aspects. He actually is the heart of this beast. But it's more than that. It's all the people around him. Look at Axelrod. Look at all the people around like George Soros. Look well, at all if, Obama, the... if Obama goes, they're going to go. I'll tell you the people we really have to get. Tony Blair is one of them. Right. And then the British financial interests controlling the EU. And let's, let's just pick up this EU thing right now, the European yeah. Union. The bailout of Spain, there was a huge fight all last week 
about bailing out the Spanish banks, and would this force them to push more austerity on the Spanish government? And the Spanish government said, "We won't take out, we won't accept the bailout of the banks unless there's no more austerity." So the EU eventually agreed and came up with a hundred billion euros, which they don't have, to bail out the Spanish banks. So they're putting a tax on all the members of Europe to pay that. Now. First of all, the Spanish banks have one bank alone, Banco Santander, which is a Rothschild bank, Interalpha Group bank, a London-centered bank, has 800 billion euros of bad debt on its books. So 100 billion to bail out the whole Spanish banking system is a drop in the bucket. But here's how crazy it is. They're asking Italy to come up with $20 billion in the bailout fund, that the, Italia, the Italians will make available to the Spanish banks at 3% interest. But Italy doesn't have the money, so they're going to have to sell bonds at over 6% interest. So in other words, the Italian government will pay over 6% interest for bonds to give them money for which they'll only get a 3% return, when they're already broke also. So the finance minister of Austria came out and said, look, Italy's going to be the next country that has to be bailed out. So why should they do this? And the Italian Prime Minister, Monti, the banker's dictator uh, over Italy, told Fector she should shut her mouth. So you've got fights now breaking out. There's a call for a banker's union, which would be a step towards a top-down dictatorship, a full dictatorship over the economy of all of Europe. The Germans are resisting it. Every other country is being forced into it because they can't run the bailout. Now, next Sunday is the election in Greece, and I think all of your listeners should be watching that closely, because if the anti-bailout, anti-austerity forces win, either Greece will leave the euro, or there will be a shock through the eurozone, because Greece will end up saying, we're postponing payment all of our debts. Well, here, here's what I think that from the Syriza party. And I think the Syriza party policy is what's going to be the uh, the watchword for the election, which and is we want to policy. stay we want to stay in the European Union, we want to stay in the euro, but we're not going to pay our debts, and we don't want a contracted uh, a fascist austerity fascism economy. We want the bankers to literally go bankrupt, and we want that ninety percent of debt created in right. air to disappear, to just be written off the books. And let's get back to the business of creating a real economy, which is based not on gold or silver, but on the labor, like the Fedder system uh, that resurrected Germany after the First World War, under the very bad arrangements with the British and French after the First World War, because it was based on an hour of German labor. Come on, let's uh, decide that people count, not corporations and phony bankers with numbers on their ledgers. That's what the problem is. Back in a moment, Harley Schlanger, LaRouchePAC.com, LaRouchePUB.com, and the phone number to call is 800-922-2907 to get more information. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and Harley, lots of uh, issues to discuss in this last segment. Um, we have wildfires all over the place. Uh, you know, we've been talking about for the last several years about NWAPA. Uh, we need NWAPA right now. I mean, if we don't start international projects to deal with collapse in food supplies and the climate shift, let's just go through the menu of items that are happening. The Midwestern states are on fire. Russia had a major peat moss fire that was over nine time zones in Russia last year. They had record temperatures in Moscow that were never seen before in history. We have situations around the world where the ozone layer now is so thin that in cities like Phoenix, in the middle of the day, it's uh, levels of 12, 13 over Me Mexico City. We're going to have crop collapse, food supply, famine, and the Chinese are smart enough to be buying up land in Central Africa, the United States, the largest buyer of land in the United States is now the Chinese PLA because they're freaked out that they're heading into famine. And they did have it 50 years ago, and unfortunately they ate everything, including their dogs, and then their relatives. In North Korea, in the last decade, they even exhumed bodies of the dead and ate them. Now, people say that can't happen again. I said, well, it's going to happen because we're too busy fighting each other and too busy not using our science to collaborate on the galactic cosmic changes. 
and there's no international response to the call by Murata, the ambassador, to deal with Fukushima. That's going to be what I call the ultimate fulcrum point, is when your food becomes radioactive, the ice age cometh, which it is, and the ozone layer goes poof, and your crop of grains and grasses and everything dies in a matter of days, and you say, what the hell happened? Well, the ozone layer went from a 12 to a 15, and you couldn't go out in the middle of the day, or you get second-degree burns, and you get blinded, and guess what? It may repair itself, or it may become somewhat dangerous, so you can't even go out in the middle of the day, but your crops are gone. Now, people say that can't happen. It sure as hell can happen, and the problem is we need our scientists to start collaborating on these issues, including moving into an ice age and dealing with Fukushima and dealing with climate change in a rational way rather than pushing carbon taxes like the latest I heard is, and I've, I've got a report here I want to give you in a minute, but I'll pull it up from, uh, from our, one well, of our let, let ladies me, in Australia. But I want you to get into solutions because yeah. people need to grasp just how desperately late the hour is and how little time we have left to respond. But the reason all of this is happening, most of it is man-made disasters. Now, we're not responsible for the 60 million year cycle of the galaxy and, and the no, universe. We, we can amplify but, it, though, by stupid policy. We, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. We, can, we can actually protect ourselves by using real science to give ourselves a fighting chance. But most of what you're talking about is man-made and, and stupid policy. So the starting point is we have to realize that we had the best system of government ever devised called a constitutional republic, which we've allowed the British to chip away and destroy to the point that most people have no idea what that means, including Tea Party people who run around saying, stick with the Constitution, and they don't even know what they're citing in the Constitution. They're, well, first they're off, wrong all the time. The first is the Constitution, the only part is the Constitution of the state. Citizens are not. Citizens have been ascribed their rights in the Bill of Rights, but the Bill of Rights was abrogated when they, in the... Uh, in the revolution in the 1860s, and they've rewritten it so basically we're con we're basically corporate citizens, not constitutional Bill of Rights citizens. And the fact is that what I really tried to say is the underlying principle behind it was that our rights come from our Creator God, not even from a government. But we've got, become a godless nation that kills our unborn, now is ready to kill our elderly with Obamacare, and we don't know in the next few weeks that these fools in the Supreme Court, because their judgment's coming out, including not proceeding with a birth certificate issue over Obama, doesn't look good. It doesn't well, look good me, at all. But, let me, but let, me, let me tell you how we solve this thing, because yes. you, you brought this up earlier on one of the breaks. There are solutions, yes. and they go back to our constitutional principles. The first one is you get a president who violates the Constitution out of office. Right. And there are any, as I pointed out in the first half hour on the program, Fast and Furious, the bailouts, the lying, the, the intelligence leaks to endanger U.S. military and security personnel, all these are reasons by which he could be impeached. So that's the first thing. Impeached or just removed under the 25th Amendment, Article 4, because the guy's insane. So you have to get Obama out. That's step number one. And right. we have the chance to do that now. Number two, Glass-Steagall, which will stop bailouts and will stop what Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan Chase is doing. It will stop global derivative speculation, and we'll put the world economy back on a sound footing, as opposed to letting the bankers continue to loot the population to cover their hopelessly bankrupt banks. And by the so way, we don't need to have a gold back currency. We need a currency like the Federal system backed by the labor of well, that's, the, po that's a, that's point the population. Number three. Yeah. We need competent national banking as defined under the Constitution. Whenever right. we've had it, we've done two things. We've paid down our debt, but we've also increased the production for the future. Under right. the Paul Ryan plan or these mindless... Uh, uh, cut taxes, cut spending plans. Austerity fascist maniacs. Well, they, yeah, they, they call themselves libertarians. Future. They talk about the fact that they're libertarians, but I have to say, uh, they must have had a frontal back to me. This is not liberty. Liberty is not austerity fascism. Liberty is where the infrastructure and the borders are secure, and your population has a safe environment that's based on real environmentalism, and we literally if you want to call it statecraft to change the environment so it's better for the ecosystem and the population and it increases the economy and infrastructure that makes it more pleasant to have enough water to have cities to have safe areas that won't go on fire but Some that of these places requires are going back 
that requires going back to a credit policy. The exactly. Fourth, the fourth point then, so it's a get out of Obama, Glass-Steagall, a national credit system, and then point number four is a great project like NWAPA, North American Water and Power Alliance, which will then hook up with other great projects, the development of the Arctic, the Siberian tundra area through a Bering Strait tunnel, Transaqua for Africa to uh, drive back the desert. We have to do that with Nawapa in our country. These are solutions. Now, you can find these solutions on LaRouchePack.com. And let me just tell you how crazy it is. This morning, finally, on CNN, someone brought up Glass-Steagall because they're talking about the Jamie Dimon testimony today, the J.P. Morgan Chase CEO. Now, why did they not say there's already a Glass-Steagall bill signed by 68 co-sponsors in the House of Representatives? They're lying to you when they say there's no solution but either Dodd-Frank or no regulation. We have a bill that was now endorsed by Thomas Honig, the former chairman of the Kansas City Federal Reserve. It's, it's even Forbes magazine is saying go back to Glass-Steagall. So we could have this policy to stop the collapse of the financial system and to protect people's future, but it's going to require your listeners getting into this mobilization. So this four-point program would work. And I'm challenging your listeners. I'm, I'm tired of hearing people moan and complain and say there's yeah, nothing just, they you can gotta, do. You can, you can do all kinds of things. There's, there's a, sure. In fact, in fact, we but we don't have a lot of time left. And the simple things to do are remove Obama, get back rational banking. By the way, when people say we need to audit the Fed, there's a bill that they're trying to push forward to audit the Fed. We had Walter Beery on. The Fed's already been audited. We need to take the damn thing over. Why are five of our six yeah, bankers on the Fed down. Reserve? I mean, we don't, we don't need another one. We don't need a Fed Reserve. Crooked. Just, just remove it and just have exactly. the Treasury coin money and, and get away from the stupid idea that you have to back it with gold. Yes, America's got tons of gold and Alaska in our mines and everything. You don't need gold. What you want to do is you back it by the full facing credit and every state should have a state bank why do we have for example and people might call this communist but it's not our biggest resource in the population is our young people you cannot have a future when half of your population can never get a job and if they get a degree they're so buried with debt they get so buried with debt they can never get it move forward that's the case in Greece and Spain and in the United States. Unemployment, and we disguise the youth unemployment by keeping them in college for six to eight years. Right. Let me just be, yeah. Get this in before we yeah. run out of yeah. time. Absolutely, yeah. Call our office. If you want to see Obama go, we'll tell you how we can get rid of him. But it's going to require you doing something. So call us and become part of a fight to get this guy out. I've been talking about this for years. We're now seeing the glimmer of hope that we can get him out. Not Obama. Obama hope, but real hope. So it's 800-922-2907. Give us a call if you're serious about this. 800-922-2907. If you don't call and you don't go to LaRouche Pack and you don't get involved, then you're not serious about being anti-Obama. That's all it is. And I consider that this, by the way, the first step in what I call repentance. Repentance is to turn and turn over back and do things. It's not just laying down your face and crying, oh, God, you have to solve this. It's God saying, get off your mat, get off the floor, get off being face down and do something. Call that number. Do something now. Remove Obama. Get Glass-Steagall. Support politicians from whatever party that are constitutional supporters of a real republic where our rights come from our creator, God, and we have real economy, not austerity fascism, not murder panels. We should call it murder panels instead of death panels. It's even better. And when we have a not only abortionist, but a uh, euthanasia promoter and infanticide promoter that now has trying to do his, his little bit to say, I'm not a crook, and he's caught red-handed with Holder, another criminal. So 800-922-2907. This is going to solve the problem, and we have to do it now so that they have time to have a real election, not a selection of two fools that are driving us over the cliff. Talk to you next week. Take care, Early.